if literally anyone has a project or an announcement that they actually want to talk about, please say I in the chat in some form. I don't care what form it is, as long as we can understand. Okay, so, okay go on. So I have, like, this one project I'm working on that's based on what I, you know, what I had ex experience with, and I'm currently working on that project right now. And then after I finish that project, I'm working on Toho Hotels Episode 10. So can I talk to you what Toho Hotels is? What about the project before that? Because you said Oh, the project before project. that. The project before that was basically like a storyboard featuring my new character Beatrice after I explore another part of the outside world. So Blonde from Hyperdimension Neptunia gets upset at me for watching a lot of videos for very long. And so I got mad at her and then I ran out of house and, and everybody's just like talking, to, talking about me and Blonde just tells everybody that, that I've left uh, because I got uh, so upset at something. Now can I talk about Toho Hotels? Okay. Okay. So. Okay, go ahead. Okay, hold on. Can I pop up a a, a playlist of Toho Hotels? Okay. Fine by me. Anywho, so you know, so Toho Hotels is basically an animated series where me and my other character cast en entered a Gensokyo Hotel, which is not canon in the Gensokyo universe by Zen because it's fan made, and the story is. Basically, like, plotless, like, Lucky Star. Except it's more of a hotel instead of a school setting. Feel free to watch them if you have the time. It's still on my YouTube channel, just to let you know. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, and that's it. Okay, Those that are was... all my working projects right now. That was a project. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Anyways. I'm still in recovery mode, so... Might be a while before I finally get back to Wrath of the Amanajaku. But the first draft script is still up if anyone wants to preview it. Okay. I'd be happy to read it, Spaz. All right. Well, I'll, I'll post the link. It's not really much of a new announcement, but if you guys want to see basically the equivalent of a uh, Avengers-style Toho story, then let me get the link. And it also contains... I, I think it should contain a link to the uh, Wrath of the Amanajaku Discord, but it hasn't been active in months. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's got the dialogue, though we're still, like, working on uh, making a few edits here and there. Like, I was having a thing where Seija would, like, uh, use a gap to get to the human village, but it accidentally opens up to uh, Lunarian Palace. I'd be like, holy shit, it's a yokai! <laughs> it would be uh, to uh, cover up a plot hole in the current draft that where it's like, why doesn't Seija just go to the human village? So that'll fix that. But yeah, the current draft is uh, it's a full plot. It just, there's no art in it, or at least not much art. Oh yeah, another thing about it is a PG comic, so it's completely safe for work. Okay, to make a long story short, because I feel like being active in some capacity, I thought about making a proper comic about how my two characters met, because I briefly touched up on it in a Q&A once, and I felt like, uh, what's the word for it? Elaborating more? Something like that. Yeah, expanding on that. Okay, cool. So yeah, there's something so yeah, that's something brief. <laughs> Draco's requesting to plug his project a little bit. Yes, please, definitely. Our project is being called Walfus Studio by Ferdy and myself. The goal is to rebuild Walfus in the ground up in an application that runs natively on all three major operating systems, Windows, Mac, and Linux, and plans to bring it to mobile platforms in a best case scenario. We're still in our early stages with the project, as we iron out a lot of the core functionality. Once we reach a point Ferdy and I deem stable, we'll make the project public and allow for the community to aid in the rebuilding efforts. We're keeping legality in mind and are thinking of licensing Walfa Studio under the GPL2 license, which means no monetary gain can be made from it. Once open source, it is always open source. The features Ferdy and I have planned are roughly as follows. These are subject to change as the project develops. Keep that in mind. Faithfully recreate the original Create.Swift look and feel. There are still people that like the original and don't want to alienate those few. Create an overhauled UI and UX, user interface and user experience, for that original experience that offers quality of life changes, refinements to the system and new additions. The main addition that's planned to be added after the core functionality is rebuilt to rebuild is Studio Mode, hence the name. Studio Mode is going to be a built-in animation suite that allows you to create animations within the software itself 
instead of out external software. I won't say much more about this for now, because that's not the main focus right now. That's recreating the base experience. If you have any questions regarding the project, please direct them to me. I'm acting as PR for the project currently. But if all goes well, this sounds great. All right. Anyway, <laughs> because he actually very recently, as part of a huge Western sort of fan game team, completed an actual pretty big project that took like a couple of years to develop. It's a full-blown Toho fan game, and it's actually fun because I've actually, I very rarely play literally any fan, so that should probably tell you literally everything. But this game is called Servants of Harvest Wish, and I'm just going to literally explain oh, them later. Yeah. Hmm. All right, there are a fair number of links to go through, but I'll go through them like one at a time. First, of course, there's the wiki article. The wiki article is fairly obvious, gives you wiki information. There's also like two download links, because Freem is more of a Japanese-based site and Bullet Forge is more of a Western-based site, but yeah. Anyways, I'm actually going to read off the script now and ignore it. Anyways, basic plot synopsis is, as you can probably guess from the name Harvest Wish, all the crops basically just decided to die for no reason before harvest season, which means that everyone in the human village is going to starve. So you have three protagonists. You can probably guess who they are. And one new protagonist who does not appear in the game anywhere else. For the record, the new protagonist, Yoko, as she's called, is my favorite because of her obsession with wheat and bread. And she gets angry at everyone for no reason. And that's great. I love it. So, of, what is this about? It's, like I said, that's basically the whole plot synopsis. It's essentially a fan game based around that synopsis, about the fact that the harvest is basically dead, and you have to actually solve the incident and restore the harvest back to normal. So basically, uh, this is the Irish potato famine if it were a beat em up shoot em up game thing with yes, fucking cute except girls. Instead of potatoes, you have wheat. But yeah. <laughs> That's cool. However, it's and, actually... And are the protagonists Raymond and Marissa as usual? And Sanai, yes. As well as that fourth protagonist, Bread Girl. Bread Dragon Girl that I mentioned in Relevance because she's technically a baker in the human village. Do not hmm. ask our dragon to become a baker in the human village. I guess she just hides the tail. That's pretty interesting. Might have to try it out sometime. But not only the premise is interesting, the gameplay is actually pretty good because... <sighs> Not only do you have the class types, you have the classic six-stage formula, as well as the extra stage. There's also a fair bit of interesting sort of post-game content because of a new system called the Anomaly System. In your second playthrough of the game, or your first playthrough of the extra stage in my case, because I did it by complete accident one time, which might not be intended because I was never able to replicate it since, but... You can ask for completely different spell cards in their entirety for each mid-boss and boss by triggering specific conditions in the game, or in the stage in particular. I have still yet to beat the extra boss of this game, but apparently that anomaly is extremely difficult to actually unlock because how convoluted it is. The music is also a bop. The system behind the game, also known as the Harvest System, haha, <laughs> Harvest was very funny, is actually very good for scoring and resource gathering, in my experience. Like, I've actually rounded around it. I've actually rounded around a scoring system in the game. And my suffering. But, music's great, system's great. I actually quite enjoy the game, so that explains why I'm actually advertising. There's also a fundraiser link that you can actually see there, too. Because the developers have actually opened a small little donation box. It will go straight to Doctors Without Borders, which will help aid in the research of COVID-19. It's a completely free game, so don't worry about that, but you can donate as much as you want to said fundraiser. Nice. But in addition to that, you have a chance to win a hard copy of the game, as well as a Ryoko wall scroll. If you see a masked girl in the game, that is Ryoko. I think she's like kind of the mascot of the game at this point. But, yeah, 
So you have a chance to win something too if you donate. So that's pretty cool. So Thank you for the very, very excellent details and review, Chun. Yeah, thanks. The game, the I'd dev be, team hopes that the game inspires you to play more Toho fan games like this one that other people have made as well. So feedback is appreciated to the dev team as well. So yeah, Adam's in the server if you want to yell at him for literally anything that you say. I think it's definitely worth checking out. I mean, this has been a pretty anticipated fan game as far as I'm aware, and even I'm kind of excited for it. Yeah, I rarely ever like play a... fan games, so uh, this is definitely worth a shot. Yeah, it's been like a two to three year worth endeavor, and it's like one of the fan games I've actually had fun with over recent years. So, Also, I'd like to say that the death bomb window in this game is far more generous. So if you're sort of a beginner, it's actually better for you to get the graph if you're needed to. The harvest system, in essence, is semi-similar to PCP's border system in that you can actually cancel the border with a bomb. Depending on how many harvest points you've managed to collect during it, you can actually get a sort of bigger bomb. So, there's also one other thing that I think I'm forgetting to mention, but... Oh, oh yeah, the difficulty curve in this game is actually really, really good. There's always been a difficulty spike in literally every fan game I play, but not this one. It's far smoother, actually, at least on normal. Time. So yeah, that's basically my entire announcement. On my first playthrough of the game, that managed to get past stage three. I managed to actually once you see it. So that should show you how good the difficulty curve is, as well as the resource collection. If you can milk that harvest system and get like all the bombs, you're basically by the way, extends are based on point item collection, so... But yeah, I guess if that's everything, then I guess we can kind of end off the town hall. Yay. I'm down for that! <laughs> thank you for joining us, you everyone. For... <laughs> and yeah, thank you, you for can... joining us in today's town hall. Be sure to wash your hands and practice sanitation to all the necessary precautions as well. Anyways, thank you for joining us, everyone. We'll see you all next town hall. Till then... Goodbye and take care of yourselves out there.